Dr. Gordon Cook here from the West Point Simulation Center. I want to give you a little tour of a uh, web app I've been working on for uh, observed fire training. Um, I think it's interesting uh, technology to be able to do this um, multiplayer and it's uh, web-based, so there's no uh, software that has to get stalled on your local machine. Anything with a web browser, uh, desktop, uh, cell phone should be able uh, to go ahead and use this. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at it here. Uh, so when you go to the first link, you're going to be presented with a screen like this. Um, this is our Ver Observe Fire Simulator. Um, and you've got uh, this very first button here to create a new FDC. Fire Direction Center. Uh, so one person is going to be in charge of how those different uh, fire emissions get inputted into here. So we can do that. And then we have to pick a scenario. All right, there's a couple in here. Um, hopefully in the future we can expand this and, and put more scenarios in for different people to use. We can go ahead and um, select one of these to play. And that'll bring up this screen. This is our, our game screen for the, the Fire Direction Center. Um, and what we've got on top here is a QR code. So if our uh, forward observers are using their cell phones, they can just uh, point it at the screen, use their camera to capture that, and it'll take them right to uh, the right link. Um, we can uh, use this link here. Uh, if we click on it, it'll open up a new tab that has the, the game in it. Um, and it, we could also take this code, uh, which changes for every game that we're going to set up, and give that to our forward observers. Uh, and tell them it. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the two screens here. So let's just assume our, our forward observers use the, the same original link. They're looking at this front screen. So they can go ahead and type in our Romeo, Zulu, Lima, Papa, Yankee. All right, and hit the join as an observer button. And then it'll load up uh, the scenario. We get the splash screen that tells us a little bit about our controls. We can bring up our binoculars, our compass, our GPS. We can walk around, so it'll take a moment here. You can see there's a progress bar. As long as that keeps moving, we're good. Because um, we're pulling in a lot of terrain uh, data. These are real-world terrain files that these are based on. And then we get our 3D view of the environment. We can use our mouse uh, to move around. If I was using a cell phone, you could actually move the cell phone as if you're holding a pair of binoculars um, to see different things. So we can see our terrain, get familiar with our map sheet, uh, and we can notice that there's little um, uh, vehicles out here. Some of maybe you can see the people. I don't know how that'll show up on the, the recorded screen. Um, so we can do that. Uh, we can walk around this WASD. This red benchmark is our uh, OP location just to help us get back to it if we needed to um, and get ourselves familiar. Now, uh, maybe I want to select a target. I'm going to need a compass bearing so I can bring up my compass. Uh, I can get a bearing off of the target. I can uh, zoom in on my compass here. We just hit the C key again. Um, it is going to keep uh, wobbling on me. I have to kind of judge where I think it's at. This is probably right on that 5-5 five, five line. Um, now, then I'm going to call that in. Now, the way that we communicate between the forward observer and the fire direction center is entirely up to you. Uh, we could be sitting shoulder to shoulder or back to back with our cell phones at and just talking to each other. Uh, we could have two windows open and do one player, and I could just type these in myself like I'm doing here. Um, we could get out the radios and put people in different rooms or spread them out uh, around the motor pool and make them go through the actual radio and, and use all the commands that they're supposed to to talk back and forth. Um, on the fire direction center side, if, if we were using our map and had a grid coordinate, we can use six-digit, eight-digit, or ten-digit grids, but we do need to break up the easting and northings to input them. And uh, in this example, maybe we're going to call a polar fire mission. So I know that I was at 5,500 mils. Um, and maybe based on the map, I'm going to guess that we're 1,100 meters away from the target. And then we can go ahead and submit our fire mission. Now, when we do that, that's going to be splash. So if we're doing training where we want to talk through the whole process of shot over, wait a couple minutes, and then splash over, you need to manage that yourselves. Uh, the game's not going to do that for us. So um, the flip side of that is if we don't want to go through that, we just want to practice adjust fire missions, we can make it instantaneous and just hit the submit button. So we can just call out our shot over, uh, shot out, splash over, splash out. I can, I can see that impact here, and I can bring up my binoculars um, 
to get a view of where that is. Wow, we are short. Okay, so now we're going to have to call in a correction, which is the next tab here for the Fire Direction Center. It pre-populates our, our direction azimuth. Um, and I'm going to have to judge this. I am not an artilleryman. I was a combat engineer in a prior life. So um, we're going to guess here. Let's maybe add 200 meters because I'm pretty far off. And we're pretty good on the target line, but I'm going to have to come right. Eh, let's go ahead and, and try coming, coming right 10. Uh, um, so we call that fire mission in. We get shot over, shot out, splash over. Wow, okay, I did pretty good. That was right on. Um, but you can see that there's there's a, some smoke there, so maybe we were you know a couple meters long on where the round impacted. There is variability built into this from round to round. It's not exactly perfect. Um, as long as you're within 50 meters of the target, it'll count as a hit, um, and we will see target effects. So the vehicles will catch fire like this, um, and we can see that we've got this little soldier uh, out over here. I don't know if we'll do it, but let's say I want to call fire for effect on this area. So the submit button shot one round at what was put in there. The fire for effect button down here is going to shoot a, a, a barrage of five rounds that are at the same location, plus or minus that error variability that we built into the system. So let's call that in. You can see here where we've spread out around a roughly 50 meter circle. And that was enough um, that we actually managed to uh, hit the other tank and this dismount who is now fallen. His body has fallen over on the ground. Um, and, and you can uh, see the target effects there, all right? Uh, maybe we want to move over. Uh, there are, whoop, here they are. There's a squad of soldiers out here in the distance that we can see walking on this mountainside. Um, so I can bring up my compass and try and figure out a bearing to them. Maybe that's 5,000. Put in a grid coordinate. I have to judge where do we think that distance is. Um, use my map. Maybe I do think that's 1,100 meters, all right? Uh, or maybe I think it's, maybe I think it's 800, eh, I don't know, 900 meters, let's call it, all right? Um, and we can submit that, and here we see our, our round on the, on the ground. Um, so we are short, all right? We haven't hit any of them. We're more than 50 meters away, um, so I'm going to have to come in and do corrections on that, too. We can add 100 meters, um, but I, I am right on the target line, so no left or right. Now, um, for the dismounts, there is, we can call in HE quick, they ground detonate, um, or we can call in some variable time fuses uh, and get some air burst effects uh, where the observers will see it uh, off the ground. They'll see, see explosions going downward from it. Um, so we go ahead and call that in. Oh, boy, that was pretty good. It was right on target, and we can call fire for effect. Um, and our whole squad is is now been uh, put out of action. We got BTR 80s in the distance here, so we can keep doing this um, and practicing uh, what we're doing. Now, if we go back to the original area, you'll notice that the smoke from our misses, all right, um, it does dissipate over time. It will eventually fade out entirely, um, but it's there so that the trainees can see where those rounds landed, have some indication. Um, but over time, they'll, they'll fade away for us so we can maybe see through them because they do obscure the battlefield a bit. Um, but maybe we want to be faster on that, get to the next uh, trainee or something. On the uh, Fire Direction Center panel here, there is a reset button. And if we hit that, all of our uh, fire indicators go away and our targets are reset. Nothing's burning anymore. Our people are standing back up. And we can go to the next thing and um, go ahead and uh, call in a new fire mission on our targets, right? And we missed, right? <laughs> um, but that's that's the generally uh, how this system all works. Um, there is then an exit button that will take us back uh, to the opening screen. Um, for the players that are playing as observers, they're, they're still in this, uh, but they won't be able to get any fire effects without going through the FDC, um, but they could view what, what was going on uh, in the scenario. Uh, I'll mention there's also a GPS that we can bring up uh, if we want to, we could make our trainees have to figure out, you know, where they are, plot their location on the map from that, um, and go through that process. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Um, I hope you all uh, enjoy giving this app a try. I very much look forward to getting feedback if we identify any bugs um, or uh, improvements. What are the features that are missing that would really, really help you make this work out better. 
Uh, I'd love to hear it. You all have a great Army Day.